Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw. I'm here in the Czech Republic in Prague. I'm here with Michela Claudino, who's the director uh, of North America for Czech Tourism. And we just got finished with an amazing uh, tour of not just Prague, but Brno and uh, some Moravia and some wonderful places all around Czech Republic. And we're going to talk about those and more. And first, we're going to start and take a look at Brno, which just happens to be Michaela's hometown. So we thought it'd be great to talk to her about that. And you're going to find out about that and more on Insider Travel Report. Now, first of all, uh, Michaela, first of all, is, this has been a great trip. We've had a great time. Uh, really, it's the first time I've really gotten outside of Prague, which was the whole point of this, I think, you know, because Prague is amazing. We had a great time at the beginning, and, and we, we, uh, we have some videos that we showed on this. But I wanted to talk to you about your city, uh, where you, you grew up and where you went to school, uh, and we had another great time about that. And I'll talk a little bit about Brno. First of all, what is Brno? It's the second largest city in uh, Czech Republic, right? Correct. Um, yes, I'm sorry, I'm grabbing the microphone. Um, That's okay. <laughs> it, is, um, it is the second largest city in the Czech Republic, and it's the capital of Moravia, which is the eastern part of the Czech Republic. And the reason we went there is because the Travel Trade Day, which is um, a workshop for tour operators from all over the world, takes place every year in a different region of the Czech Republic. So this year it was in Moravia and in Brno in particular. Now, oh, what is the really the major attractions of Brno from, from a tourist point of view? Um, I think, you know, let me just backtrack a little bit. I think everybody who goes to Prague has a tendency to compare, you know, everything else they see in the Czech Republic to Prague. Right. So it's, it's a little difficult to, you know, convince people to go outside of Prague because Prague is amazing. But I think Brno really found its niche, sort of, because it uh, promotes itself as a, uh, as a city that's really... Um, for the locals as well. Mm -hmm. So when you go, you really see a lot of the people who are who live there. It's not so touristy as Prague. It has an amazing architecture. So people who are into modern architecture, especially functionalism, the architecture from the 20s, can really find some interesting uh, villas there and architecture such as the Villa Tugendhat or other other buildings. And we did go. I, we did get a tour of the, that villa, which is amazing. Uh, and also some of the the, the one of, there's a hotel there called Avion. Uh, which is also really cool. It's, it's done in the 1920s. Again, the functionalist movement and similar movements uh, that in the 20s. And so if you are into architecture, this town is, is for you, right? Yes, yeah, it is. And actually, Brno also became some sort of like a gastro mecca in the Czech Republic, surprisingly mm -hmm. enough. I mean, I have been away for 20 years and the city has changed so much. So a lot of the new restaurants, you know, new young chefs, uh, great bars, great... Um, cafes, all of this is actually happening in Brno right now. So it's sort of like a very vibrating city. And we did get a chance to sample some. I went to a lovely cafe called Seoul. Uh, one night we went to a, a, a great place for dinner, and I can't remember what that was, but it was a, a really interesting restaurant uh, and, and really was, you know, it, there's a vibrant kind of feel and li nightlife in Brno, right? Yeah, and it's also um, a city where a lot of the students live. So we have um, a number of universities. So at the given point, I think we have like 80,000 students during the school year. So you can see it's a very, you know, people sit outside and um, just take in the atmosphere. A lot of festivals, um, you know, music, theaters. And we end up going on the, on the beer tram, uh, the oh. beer trolley, which was a little fun. Uh, they actually, you can go and you just keep going around and around and around. And at some point they let you go. Uh, but I think I only had one beer though. I th that was it. But that was a lot of fun. Yeah, right. So, um, yeah, this is a specific experience. I mean, Czechs really would sit in a pub and drink a beer. They don't need to take the tram or shalina, as they call it. You know, they, they prefer to sit in a, um, in a pub. But, um, yeah, so any combination with, with beer in the Czech Republic works. <laughs> Now, the other thing about it is that, that um, it does have historical attractions. We actually hiked all the way to the top of the old town hall and got some wonderful views uh, of, it's a really very scenic city because uh, you got, you got the, the, the major castle, which we're going to talk about in a second, uh, but you, got, you can look all a lot of churches and you can see everything from the top of that town hall, right? 
Yes, so it's one of the attractions, you know, so is the so-called cabbage market, which is like a farmer's market um, right in the center of the city. Uh, yeah, we have the old town hall with the Bernal Dragon, which is a symbol of the city together with the wheel. So plenty of things to do, and it's also a very walkable city, so you can walk around very easily, great for kids. So, yeah, so yeah. As someone said you can walk from one place to the uh, one side of the city to the other in about 15 minutes. It's not that far to go, yeah. uh, and, and everything is there, and, and some wonderful squares. Uh, everywhere I noticed there was also music. It was amazing. Yeah, so I think this goes, you know, we can say that about the Czech Republic in general. So, you know, Czechs love music and it's very accessible. And especially as the weather gets better, um, you have just some musicians playing outside, really students who just play outside to have fun. And then there are a lot of music festivals during the summer, um, you know, and uh, pretty much every weekend there's something happening. So. And then at the main square we walked through, there are a lot of buildings dating from the 1800s, the 1900s. There's a lot of historical stuff going on. Uh, it, it really is. There was the astrological clock, which is a interesting which is not everybody's favorite and you, you, you we're going to show a, a little photo of that and you'll maybe understand why uh, but it is it's not the same as the astrological clock here in Prague which is much more famous but it, it's just a really vibrant cool city and the trams are running back and forth you got to watch a lot of times because um, you got to make sure you're not in the way of the trams right yes yes yeah yeah the, the public transportation is um, you know is, is great and um, yeah the, the astrological clocks we have now when I think about it, almost every city we went to had an astrological clock, right? Every, you're absolutely right. Even one, 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 The original one here in Prague, and then there was the one in, in Olmutz, oh, Olmutz. Olmutz. And then you saw the one in Brno, so we had yeah. this thing for, for clocks, yeah. yeah. Especially astrological clocks. Well, And then one of the things, and then uh, this past day, uh, we actually, and you weren't with us unfortunately, but we went up to the castle, which actually I thought was a beautiful, you know, fun thing to do. And it turns out it was also, it had been a, a prison too, right? Right, the Spielberg Castle. So it's not what it's it's a dominant of the city. So yeah. you see it when you're arriving. Um, it's not your typical castle. You can really expect beautiful interiors with furniture and stuff. It was a prison of the nations it's, uh, during the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Um, but it's it's a yeah, it's a really interesting place to visit. Yeah, um, they had a lot of you know pseudo dungeons and things like that. But it was really a, a very scenic and also you're way up high above the city, so you get some incredible views. And then there's something they call underground Brno, uh, which I didn't know what the heck they were talking about. And it turns out that they're really marketing. There's a, 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 an old uh, reservoir, underground reservoir, that is now very popular and everybody wants to go see it. So that was interesting to just walk down underneath and just walk around this thing a little bit. Why is that so popular? I don't know. Well, I think it's new, number one, you know, it has never been open to public, so it was like a technical uh, space where, you know, public wouldn't be allowed to, to visit, so they opened it, I think, two years ago, and they only allow a certain number of people, so it's not like you have to book it in advance, I believe, but then yeah. you have the underground under the cabbage market also, which is accessible. We also have the second largest ossuary, actually, in Europe, um, in, in Brno, so um, there's a little bit of, uh, like, this, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, there's, and then there's another Another thing that we didn't get to go see, apparently there's an old uh, nuclear bomb shelter for the Cold War that people want to see. We didn't get to see that, but it sounded fascinating. For Americans, that might be interesting because, you know, we were the ones allegedly going to be bombing, but it never happened, thank God. Uh, but, but you can go visit that as well, right? Correct. Yeah, it's actually on, under the Spielberg Castle, uh, and you can spend a night. If you, you want, spend a night you in the cold. Spend a night. You can spend a night there. Yeah, That's if you if you dare. Yeah. 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 So it's really there's so much to do in Brno, and it really is such a it's a cafe culture city. Great bars, great restaurants, great, great cafes, uh, and really a young and vibrant city as well, which is great. Very very different from Prague, uh, and and just another side of Prague. And it's really the other thing is it's only about what hour away from Vienna, right? About hour and a half. Yeah. So it's actually closer to Vienna than it is to Prague. So it's very easy to uh, to travel from Vienna to Brno, through Brno to Prague, for instance. Yeah, it's, and it's yeah. great. And so you, that, that's one way you can, it's like, you may not have thought you could do that. A lot of people go straight to Prague and they're going like this. And so this is a way to do it from Vienna uh, through Brno, Brno. I'll say that right. And it, it's just a real, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it's a great way to see another side of Czech Republic or Czechia as we're now going to be calling it and uh, now uh, anything else you want to tell our travel advisors about Brno your hometown right my hometown no I, I think you sum it up pretty well and you thank you for featuring Brno very excited and there's a great website go to Brno.com 
so you can really learn a lot about the city and what to do and what to see. And um, yeah, visit Moravia on your way, you know, when, you, when you're traveling to the Czech Republic. So visit and stop in Brno, definitely. Because Brno, I mean, has great, also, it's a great starting point to explore the, the region. And so we are going to talk about this yeah. in the next interview, see, because we are going to talk about Moravia, because that's exactly what we did, is we used Brno to go explore the rest of Moravia, which is an incredible area of uh, wine, of castles, of... Uh, you know, it, it, we, we had a great time, but we're going to talk about that in the next in interview and more. I want to thank you for taking the time. Thank you for introducing me to Brno, your hometown, and really it is a, a wonderful place to visit. Well, thank you. Thank you for finally accepting the invitation, James. It took a while, <laughs> yeah, only about 10 years. It, it did, <laughs> but finally you're here. Okay, I'm thank here. you. I'm here. I'm a little late bloomer sometimes. <laughs> I don't like that. But anyway, I'm James Schillinglaw, so we're in Prague, but hey, go to Brno and send your clients there soon. And this is Insider Travel Report. <laughs>